Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dory and here today I want to talk about INFJ Jesus projection. And this is actually a very important discussion I believe because a lot of INFJs fall victim to this Jesus projection and uh, hurt themselves and other people by doing so. So what is the Jesus projection? I believe the, this is when you put out an image of yourself that is uh, unnaturally bright, unnaturally positive, unnaturally good in its nature and naturally intelligent and wise. So you're putting out the perception of yourself as more wise, more intelligent, more kind, more generous, more affectionate, more loving than what is really happening inside. So while INFJs have just as many problems and issues and struggles as anyone else, INFJs, they are very keen on putting out the perfect image to the world around them. Why is this? Why are INFJs so afraid of this? You know, all types are afraid of vulnerability. INFJs, they are a shape-shifting type. So they have a gift and that gift is they are able to affect other people and influence other people and influence how they are seen. They are able to use diplomacy to get into any group. They are able to use it to get accepted by anyone, to bridge conflicts and to connect with even people of an opposite or a very different personality type. So INFJs, they can use this uh, to transform how they are seen by other people. For an INFJ, often it's about setting an ideal for others and for yourself. INFJs are very much people that want to be perfect. INFJs are people that want to be uh, strong. And INFJs are people that want to be above criticism. INFJs want to hit the point where they are basically above critique from other people. Ideally, my comment sections are empty of any negative feedback about me. Ideally, there is nobody that has any problem with anything I say. Ideally, everyone will always agree with everything I think. Because I am so good at communicating it, and because I can create a message that can be almost universally liked. So, as an INFJ, I've had this issue and I had this struggle in myself for a very long time and uh, I think it's time to break that chain and I think it's uh, time to uh, challenge that image and that perception that I create of myself outwardly. And I've tried to do this in several videos now. Uh, whenever I notice that uh, people are starting to gain false perceptions about me, I am very quick to try to correct these perceptions and to try to counter them by putting out some video where I am very vulnerable or where I share of something that I struggle with or where I admit to some flaw or issue that I have. And I do this because I want to make sure that people can relate to me. You know, the biggest problem of the Jesus projection is when you put out an image of yourself as perfect and when you hide and cover up flaws and insecurities and issues that you are having, you break any possibility of having com human connections with other people. You know, it's almost impossible for people to relate to you because we don't relate to perfect characters. If I would write a perfect character in a book, nobody would like him or relate to him because he would be perfect. And none of us are perfect and none of us feel perfect. So, uh, except if we're nar narcissists or something, of course. Most of us uh, gravitate towards weak and damaged characters in books. So... Uh, what an INFJ has to do is they have to uh, show their suffering to other people and sh show their struggles and show their weaknesses and show their issues while they are trying to do and be the best version possible of themselves. For an INFJ uh, to combat uh, this uh, Jesus projection, often it's about, uh, well, admitting to people that what you are doing is very difficult. Admitting to people that you are very stressed while doing something. Admitting that something is costly for you or draining or overwhelming. Admitting that you are nervous about doing something or expressing yourself or putting yourself out there. Admitting that you are worried what other people will think of you or that you are hurt by negative criticism or negative feedback. I think these things are the primary things all INFJs should strive for, you know, never cover up 
your hardship while working towards an ideal or a goal that is important to you. If you have a vision or something that is very important to you, be honest about that. And if you are helping another person and it's taking something for you to do it, be honest with that. So say and be honest and upfront about what you need and what, uh, some, how something feels to you and how something is impacting you and what worries you have about something and what anxieties you might feel in regards to something. I have uh, said and I've come up with kind of a thumb rule for myself and it's uh, about vulnerability and uh, this is something I think uh, uh, all people need to hear. There is nothing uh, necessarily vulnerable about being weak, you know, being weak in itself and sharing weakness is not necessarily be the same as being vulnerable. I believe that being vulnerable is being strong in being weak. So vulnerability is being strong in being weak. You know, a person who is simply weak is not vulnerable, but a victim. But a person who is strong in being weak is vulnerable. So that's why often it's that uh, when we are told to be vulnerable, it doesn't mean that we are told to put all our problems on our partner or family. It's not admitting that... Uh, uh, or attacking somebody else for making our lives difficult or it's not putting ourselves in uh, uh, or giving somebody else guilt for something that they did to us it's not uh, uh, making somebody else feel bad for something they did to us or uh, showing anger or resentment that you c carry or harbor towards another person it's uh, being upfront about how much of an issue it was or what the struggle it was like sharing with your parents that yeah this was very difficult for me growing up with you uh, but it also taught me this about myself or it also helped me understand this and in doing so in like taking ownership of something uh, it me meant I had to learn to do this or it meant I had to improve this in myself or it taught me about something you are showing that uh, you are not simply the victim of something, but you are also an, the agent who experienced something and lived through something and went past it. So this is also something that makes it a lot more easy for other people to listen to you and hear your story. So in doing so, in sharing with other people, you can also create more open connections. Like you can talk openly about a conflict you had with your partner or a struggle you had with your parents or... Uh, something difficult you went through with a friend without making your friend feel guilty about it by simply taking ownership of it and hoping they, they will take ownership of their stuff as well. Uh, so what you'll have is a conversation where both of you talk about something uh, difficult that happened to you together, something you were both experiencing and showing each other's different sides of it and learning from it and growing past it. So that's the ideal. So this is a video that is also a message to INFJs, but it's also a message to people who know INFJs who are the friends of INFJs, because as a friend of an INFJ, you might sometimes feel that the INFJ is constantly trying to appear in a certain way, uh, that they are constantly putting on a front, that they are never uh, being completely real with you, that they are never really opening up to you about how they feel. So what you can do then as a friend is you can set a framework that will help dispel the illusion. Uh, something very simple you can do is simply redirect it back to the INFJ. You know, you can say something like, is that not very difficult for you? That must be very hard. Oh, uh... That's nice that you did that. That must have took a lot of energy for you. That must have been very stressful for you. Something that makes the INFJ aware of their own emotional state and their own experiences and something that validates for the INFJ to have an emotional response or to think and uh, process something emotionally as well as intellectually. It can happen that INFJs think they are very open about themselves when in reality they are being very intellectual about themselves and there's a difference between being an intellectual about yourself and being open about yourself 
there's a difference between being self-aware about yourself and being emotionally self-aware about yourself. So the difference is feeling something fully while you talk about it. It's uh, experiencing and talking about something not just as an intellectual exercise or as... uh, some kind of lesson to draw through it out, but also something that meant something to you or also something that was important to you. So INFJs um, tend to struggle with this. Now it's time to talk about why the Jesus projection is so bad and so harmful for the INFJ themselves. INFJs, the more you project an idea outwardly of yourself as perfect, infallible, intelligent, wise, beyond your years, kind, uh, giving, generous, the more, the stronger the feeling that you're going to have that you are terrible, that you're harmful, toxic, rude, stupid, ignorant, flawed, weak, stupid, you know, all those things, you know. Uh, You might not have seen the connection, but it's almost uh, always true that every time I've gone out into the world and put out an image of myself that was greater than how I really felt, the stronger my feeling afterwards, the stronger the backslash, the stronger the shadow that came to me and said, no, Eric, you're stupid, you're an ignorant idiot, you're basically nothing, you're basically worthless, Uh, you're basically just a fraud, you're basically... Uh, yeah, I would just go over every bad thing I did in my life. I would go over every mistake I made, every stupid thing I said. And uh, it would be like uh, two very contrasting polar opposites. It would be very yin and yang. It would be inside yang and outside yin. It would be outside white and inside black. Complete black, complete darkness. Everything sucked. Everything was wrong. Everything was flawed. And so a lot of time, well, it's like you project an image outwardly of yourself as Jesus while feeling inside like uh, you're Satan, if you want to put it in biblical terms. And uh, obviously this is just a backslash. It's something that comes in waves. It's like you, when you're out there and you talk about it, you don't feel this way. Like you get so caught up in the image yourself, like you get so caught up in the positive. Uh, But... It's also like uh, while you're caught up in it, you also are a bit distanced to it. If people compliment you on it or if people say, wow, Eric, you're so intelligent or you're so wise. It's like, oh, mm, yes, yes, very wise. Uh, And uh, I wouldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I could never believe anything positive anybody said about me. Really, I do believe that Uh, there is something inherently positive about putting out and trying to be the best version of yourself possibly outwardly it's trying to be a better person than you are it's trying to go out and do good deeds even though it's costing and draining it's trying to choose to be wise and to have introspection and wisdom and foresight before you do something or say something it's choosing your words with care it's being able to understand where another person is coming from before you pass judgment to them it's all those things and it's something positive that INFJs try to do this it's very positive that you try to do this but be aware that it is costly on you be aware that it is draining be aware that being good is not something easy be aware that being wise is something that takes hard work and experience and a lot a lot a lot of mistakes Uh, Be aware that uh, you're going to make mistakes and that you're going to have flaws and that uh, there's going to be bad things about you to criticize and hardships to move past and struggles and flaws and issues and bad things you've done on the way there. So also don't just be the person that passes judgment to yourself but also be the person that has mercy on yourself. So... Be the person that uh, sets an example for yourself about who you want and aspire to become. And be a person who passes judgment to yourself when you fail to be these things. But also be a person that has mercy on yourself after you've done these things. Yeah, I did it. I forgive myself for it. but I will t- And I'll try to do better in the future. And uh, most importantly, 
share your journey and struggle with other people. Be human. <laughs> uh, be a person that struggles and has flaws and has issues and has pains and hardships and doubts on the way. Uh, because it's going to help you, you know, your emotions, they're going to help you. Um, and uh, being aware of your emotions is going to make you more wise. So uh, it's choosing to be complete in yourself while you move forward in life. It's choosing to be honest with yourself and with other people while you try to also be something better than honest, something better than great, something better than positive. Um, and uh, it's something that's going to make you more self-aware and more mindful while you live your life. And it's also going to help you relate to and connect better with other people. Because as I said, uh, the Jesus uh, projection, it uh, causes you to feel disconnected from other people and causes other people to feel disconnected from you. And that's, I don't know what is the worst thing about <laughs> the Jesus projection, but I think that's uh, definitely high on the list. Now, in the manner of getting rid of the Jesus projection in myself, I'm going to confess some things. So here are five bonus INFJ confessions. Enjoy. Yesterday at work, a coworker came up to me and she said, Eric, you need to learn how to do something. And she didn't give any context, so I immediately jumped to the worst assumption. I did something wrong. I failed at the new task. I had done something I shouldn't have. Oh no, I did something terrible. And... Uh, Turned out it was all a misunderstanding. She thought I hadn't been trained in a task and she just wanted to ask if I had been trained in it yet. And I had. And I had done it and uh, she didn't know. And it was very awkward and I felt very embarrassed to have responded so nervously to the thought of having done something wrong. Uh, I was just trying very hard to uh, earn a promotion so I had really put a lot of energy and effort into doing it perfectly and I really, really didn't want to be caught making a mistake. Number two, I had bought something for my girlfriend and I didn't know where it was and uh, so instead of looking for it, I had anxiety about not being able to find it for a week and I just dreaded the moment she would ask me where it was and uh, then when she asked about it, I went straight into panic mode and I couldn't find it. Until I realized I should just be rational about it. I should just slow down, breathe. And then I realized, oh yeah, I put it there. And then I went and picked it out. And uh, I felt like such an idiot for feeling anxious about it and thinking about it. And not actually just looking for it. But yeah, that's me. Number three. I felt like such a fool when I built my new website, Architopias.com, and then I hated the name, and then I uh, hated the video, and then I realized that I uploaded the video in the wrong format, and then I thought, oh my god, I sound like such a nerd saying this, and then I thought, oh my god, this is gonna ruin my credibility. Uh, but really, it was just about, for me, discovering that I don't always have to be so serious about everything I do. I am very serious about everything I do, but sometimes it's nice to just be able to laugh about it and to also be able to approach it in a fun and light-hearted ma manner, you know, because these are things not just to be serious about, but they're also things to be to laugh about. Personality psychology is something to not just study, but also something to have fun with. And uh, yeah, that's discovering number three. Sometimes uh, when I've done something wrong I go on such a guilt trip and I'm so hard on myself for having made this mistake, for having uh, ended up screwing up with this or having done something so badly. But then I realized and I think about it and I realized that uh, by being so hard on myself I am losing an opportunity to be empathetic with the other person. Rather than be hard on myself for having made a mistake, I should be empathetic with the person who got affected. <laughs> Rather than saying, oh no, I'm such a terrible person, uh, I should say to the other person, oh, sorry that this happened, I uh, hope this doesn't cause any problems for you, is there anything I can do to make up for it? There are times when I get so deep into my work that I become really selfish, uh, uncommunicative to my friends and family members, like so lost in my work, so focused that... 
I forget what's going on for other people and then I can feel so bad about that, you know. Oh, I should have messaged them, I should have heard what's going on with them, I should have taken a break to go see them, to uh, figure out what was happening and what was going on. And uh, at the same time, I also realized that I have a right to get interested and excited about my own work and to get into it. And... uh, I shouldn't feel so bad about myself for doing it and uh, it's just an extension about me and it's something positive I do and it's something that often brought a lot of people to me as well. So it's not something that is pushing people away or necessarily something that's putting a wall behind me and other people. It's uh, part of me and, uh, and something I can use to connect with other people. Thank you all for watching and if you like this video please like, share and subscribe and of course feel free to join Architopias.com and to check out the new website I built and to join the forum and community. It's going to be awesome and I am really happy with this new angle and uh, I hope uh, you're going to love it as much as I do.